Just is walking the door. Come on, man. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. We're going to be up there in church, amen. <laughs> and I know one thing. Ain't nothing dead about me. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Ain't nothing dead about me. I'm going to always put the joy on the Lord. Yes, you do. And I'm going to put more joy on display on my bad days rather than putting all the joy. You see, y'all waste all y'all joy on y'all good days. Y'all have nothing left for you. Y'all better listen to me. You waste all your joy. Oh, you get overly excited. So when your bad days come, you ain't got no joy now. You better learn to spread that thing out. Better put some in the bank. <laughs> Enjoy in the bank. Amen. Um, today, um, the title, title of our topic, um, our sermon today, is it ain't gonna be one of the ones you shout on because this is a penetrating message sermon. Faith, not emotions. Faith, not emotions. For we know New Living Translation. King, uh, New Living Translation, please stand while I read this. New Living Translation. Y'all, none of y'all feel like y'all in the Catholic Church. Up, down, up, down. But at least you ain't getting on your knees for 30 minutes. Amen. Praise the Lord. For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven. Oh, man of God, go back there and turn that. Um, speaker, I'll turn that little microphone off on my desk. Thank you. One more time, for we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, this is when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. We grow weary in our present bodies and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like New clothing. For we will put on heavenly bodies. We will not be spirits without bodies. Somebody say, will not. Will not. Be spirits yeah. without bodies. Uh, while we live in these earthly bodies, we groan inside. But it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies. The clothes that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. I got to read that again. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these old, these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. God himself has prepared us for this. God himself. Who's preparing you? God. Now, don't say what I say. Say self. Who's preparing me? Now you talk to self about that. And as a guarantee for his have as a, as a guarantee he has given us his holy spirit. So we are always confident even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies we are not home with the Lord. For we live by believing and not by seeing. Yes, we are fully confident and we would rather be away from these earthly bodies, for then we will be at home with the Lord. So whether we are here in this body or away from this body, our goal is to please him. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. For we will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated. I would like you to listen to a reading if I can. Can I read? Somebody say, Pastor, when you read, it, it just, it just. Huh? It, it, anybody, anybody like the way I read? Huh? I only charge five dollars a night for uh, reading about your bed while you go to sleep. So just call me and, 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 and I got my, I got my, my card and. And I'll, I'll read it to you. Give me five dollars, put on the card, and I'll read to you till you go to sleep. <laughs> Only five dollars. All donations are going to a nonprofit organization called the Spirit of Jesus. I really like my reading that much. Just call me. But have your debit card ready. <laughs> I want to read this to you if I can. Never thought about that. That would be a good way to raise money for the church. Yeah. Um, faith, not emotion, May the 1st, 2016. We walk by faith, not by sight, 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. For a while we are fully aware of God's concern for us. 
But then when God begins to use us in his work, whose work? We begin to take a pitiful look and talk only of our trials and difficulties. And, while the, and all the while, God is trying to make us do our work as hidden people who are not in the spotlight. See, that's what goes on. We get this gift and then we want to always shine. But God said, you ain't working for me as long as you're concerned about being seen. All right. Blessed is the man that believes without seeing. Blessed is the man that, 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 that can see me without seeing you. Be careful now. Blessed is the man that can put God on display without putting his self on display. Blessed, no, I'm going to stop right there. I'll be done getting the Beatitudes all over again. And all the while, God is trying to make us do work as hidden people who are not in the spotlight. None of us would be hidden spiritually if we could help it. I get so mad at people. When people are going through, you act like they want to go through. You act like they want to look that stupid. They can not help I know that I know now that you you know came to church and you've been a member of the church for a year you you know you can you can help the things you do stop lying to yourself you just as helpless as that person that you you sit there trying to judge you just a better hider but your hiding self God called you Adam Adam way out there and you still hide like he don't see you at least Adam had enough sense to answer. We are sitting here and we sit here and how I know you hide it because you're sitting there judging other folks. A person that a person that's got stuck in their own closet and got can't afford to judge. But you're hiding what's in your closet if you're judging. Can we do our work when it seems that God has sealed up heaven? Oh my God. Can I do my work just because I love God and not what he has for me? Can I? Hmm. Let me read this so I can get into this word because I, I ain't going to be here long. Say it. Go on and say it. Take your time. I know it was coming. I know it was coming. I know it was coming. It, it says, some of us always want to be brightly illuminated saints with golden halos and with the continual glow of inspiration to have other saints of God dealing with us all the time. A self-assured saint is of no value to God. He is abnormal. Oh my God, ain't that something? Wow. Unfit for daily life and completely unlike God. We are here not as immature angels, immature angels, immature angels, immature angels, but as men and women to do the work of this world. God says, angels work in heavenly places. Can I use some men to act like angels? Can I use some women to act like angels here on earth? Can I? Oh, yeah. Uh, Y'all don't even realize. It's a shame. Y'all so used to charging everybody. You even want to charge God. If you do this for me, Lord, I'll, I'll do it. Are you serious? And we are to do... It with an infinitely greater power to withstand the struggle because we have been born from above. When I know who I am. See, the reason you I know you don't know who you are because you're still walking around here in doubt. Once I come into the knowledge of whose I am, I don't doubt and don't worry. I ain't concerned about nothing. If, this, if, I, if something in this world takes me out, you know what I say? I build an altar of thanks. I ain't scared. You're fighting to try to stay in a place that's beating the hell out of you. When God said there's a better place, you, I don't want to die. You're three months behind on your mother. What, what you want to stay here for? I don't want to die. You got a, you got a court case that, that you know you're going to lose, but you're trying to stay here to fight. Oh, it's big, Bishop. <laughs> you don't want to leave this troubled world? What you need to understand is not about what you stop doing. It's about what you allow God to prepare you for. We all worry about stopping this and stopping that. All of us worry about being healed. And, and nobody wants to go through the process.
process to be healed and the process to be healed before you can be healed you got to accept the healing Amen. but I don't want to be healed believe it you just want what you want right now that's what you want if we continue if we continue try to bring back those exceptional moments of inspiration it is a sign that we it is not God we want I've been looking for me a members only jacket because I had some good times in my members only jacket I can't get to my better times because I, 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 I'm spending all my time trying to find me a members only jacket and hoping the jacket bring back the good times I had when I wore the members only some of y'all, y'all, some of y'all members might, only. some of y'all might be a little too young to know what members only. Back in the day, members only was like, 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 like Louis Vuitton. It was like, it was like, yes, it was that, it was that thing. And you know, brothers had, uh, we had, so, and, and those who were really hip, we, we use words like hip back in the day. Those who were really hip, we didn't have a, a members only just a jacket. We had a whole outfit. All right, yeah, we had, we had a whole members only outfit. Yeah, we mess around. Well, don't mess around. Let me catch me in my Calvin Klein's and my oh, members only, huh? Oh. A member only of Calvin Klein. I would have talked to me. The only member, the only I want now is a member of the faith and a, and a follower of Jesus Christ's family. Amen? Amen. But God says, let's do it one more time. He said, we continue to try to bring back those exceptional moments of inspiration. It is a sign that it is not God we want. We are becoming obsessed with the moments when God did come and speak with us. And we are insisting that we do it again. Now you're demanding to God. Instead of accepting the commands of God. Come on somebody. But what God wants us to do is to walk by faith. How many of us have set, our, set ourselves aside as if to say I cannot do anything else until God appears to me. He will never do it. We will have to get up on our own without any inspiration and without any sudden touch from God. Then comes our surprise. And we find ourselves exclaiming, why? He was there all the time. I never knew it. Somebody bookmark that. Say, I never knew it. I never knew it. And don't let me leave him without somebody saying, Lord, uh, Bishop, what did I never know? Don't let me leave him before I tell you what you never knew. Never live for those exceptional moments. They are surprises. God will give us his touches of inspiration only when he sees that we are not in danger of being led away by them. When you understand how to handle money, God will give you the millions he got to set aside for you. But he said, if I give you a million right now, you won't come back to church. Lord. I always wanted to build a nightclub. God said, when you get in your heart, I always wanted to build a church. Now you know what to do with the money that I want to give you. Come on, somebody. Amen. <laughs> Y'all will get it by the time you get to 95. We must never consider our moments of inspiration as the standard way of life. Our work is not is our standard. We always see God as yesterday was a beautiful moment. But that's all it was, a moment. Yes, we don't set tents up every Saturday and for events. We have people who want to live in events. We have people who are event-oriented. Somebody say event-oriented. Event and see, my thing that I want to tell you is, what you don't understand is, when you have an event yesterday, I don't know if anybody heard my, my, my Michael Jackson invitation up here yesterday, and she walked, and she walked through the door. I said, anybody got a tissue? Yes, that's my, I did my best Michael Jackson ever said. She was walking through the door. She was looking so beautiful. And I got emotional over the moment. Yes, she did. It was beautiful. Really Anybody got attention? Yes. So what I'm trying to tell you is that, that, that why do we get set up and let our emotions bring us to a place of frustration? We learned this morning in our, in our, in our class that, that, that frustration is not good for us. And, and the truth be told, you are emotionally frustrated every day. I don't understand why you have so much trouble having faith when you are emotionally frustrated every, every day. Stop lying if you tell me you ain't, I ain't never frustrated, bitch. Yes, you are. You got, a, you got, you got, you got your bank account. Your bank account say, say, 
It don't say negative 400, a negative 500, a negative 200. It say negative, negative. And you gonna tell me you got a bank account that say negative, negative, and you ain't frustrated? Stop lying to yourself. I got a brother right here that's copping in the shop. I don't know what's going on with him and he's copping. I know he can't drive mine, but anyway. <laughs> you gonna tell me he ain't frustrated because he's caught in the shop every day? What I don't understand is you have learned how to live through your frustrations. You know why? Because you have enough faith to say that one day these frustrations will be over. Amen. But why can't you handle your emotions like you handle your frustrations? You can handle your emotions like you handle your frustrations because I can't blame my frustrations on nobody but myself. Yeah. Or I might get frustrated with somebody else, but then when I get frustrated with somebody else, I, I, I let you know that I'm not frustrated with myself because I let my emotions take over. My Lord. And when I let my emotions take over, I eliminate any power of God to do anything in my life. Lord, help me, Jesus. Why do you not want God to have total control of your life? Because if you have total control of your life, self has no say so. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. And I told him this morning, you can't get mad at people for, for, for living the way they've been trained. I, I don't see um, Brother Troy cry that much. But when Brother Troy wants what he wants, he cries. And I'm glad he got a mother. Whoever now and then when he cries, she, she sit him over there and says, just cry it off. You better learn how to tell them children, cry it off. That's what's wrong with your children right now. Amen. When they were babies, you wouldn't let them cry. When they were babies, she just had a, had a bottle of milk, and, and now she's crying again, and you're going to get another bottle of milk and it's sticking up in her mouth. Then you wonder why she's tucking. Because every time she cried, every time she got emotional, every time he got emotional, you gave him or her what they wanted. Now you wonder why. Now all of a sudden, you want to you wanna, you wanna institutionalize somebody. Because of how they were taught to live. Because of how they were taught to think. You want to institutionalize somebody for what you did. And what the world wants you to do, the world wants you to feed their emotions. Because as long as you're feeding their emotions, they'll never have a need to depend on God. Keep feeding them emotions and see what happens. See, it takes faith. It takes faith. To depend on God. It takes faith to wait on God. But I've been taught all I got to do is get angry. When a baby cries, the baby is what? Angry. So all I got to do is get angry and somebody, somewhere, going to feed this, these emotions. And then I get to the place. And it's so funny. I got members. Yeah, I'm talking about y'all. And I know I'm drinking apple cider. <laughs> 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 but I told him yesterday, they said this is champagne, and I told him yesterday, I said, Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. I'm gonna drink me about three or four glasses, and I'm gonna walk around right here and tell everybody around right here what I think and what I wanna say, and then I'm gonna tell y'all I was on that alcohol yesterday, and then they messed around and told me apple cider. So I can't tell. So I know I'm talking about you right now, and I know I'm drinking apple cider. <laughs> I got members that get on the phone. And they go from one member to the next member to the next member until they find somebody to feed that emotion. Amen. They call this member. Hey, did, did, did the sister so and so call you? Oh yeah. Did brother so and so call you? Oh yeah. But what you tell them? Oh, uh, uh, you must have tell them what they want because they called me too. You did. I didn't feed the emotion, so I gotta call brother out there. Brother out there didn't feed the emotion. So so y'all just pass around till y'all find somebody to put the bottle in your mouth. Amen. Oh, <laughs> right now. Call around to you by somebody. Wow. Because you've been taught to cry for the bottle. 
You talk when I get mad, I get what I want. And if, and if I just keep looking long enough, my auntie will be here in a minute. I'm a, when I see Auntie Bell, I know when Auntie Bell come in. And when she see me cry, Auntie Bell gonna pick me up. Mm -hmm. Are you serious? When I, child, when I was a child, it was all right to cry. But when I become a man or a woman, guess what? I am no longer a child of emotional people. But don't miss that. When I become a man or a woman, I am no longer a child of emotional people. And what freaks me out is when I get emotional, even I'm, one minute, I'm grown. One minute I pay my own bills. One minute I make my own money. But then when, when trouble hits, I call my emotional parents. Uh, I know y'all don't like me. Y'all better put me something cool, y'all. Come here and burn this place up. <laughs> about what I don't know nothing about. Yep, that's right. I was an only child. But when you made me man, I know my mom was going to amen her baby. Come on somebody. Amen. But what do you do? And I, and I couldn't figure out why my mother had so much animosity for me but yet had so much love for me. Because God knew if she had not, he had not let her grow a spirit of animosity, I would never have left my emotional place of depending on my emotional parent. So I no longer depend on my mama because I know my mama gonna give me, she gonna give me what? She gonna give me more, 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 more hell than, than, the, than the situation. So I no longer, y'all, do y'all understand what's going on here? God hardened her heart so I can look to him for help. Amen. Know anybody like that, son? Amen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> but God hardened your mother's heart mm -hmm. so you can have to depend on him. But what we want to do, we want to act like we land in a crib. Because mm -hmm. you know why? Faith takes work. When I'm laying in a crib, who's providing the, the, the milk? My emotional parent. I don't have to do nothing for God if I got you to tell me I'm okay within my stupidness. If I got you to tell me I'm okay in my foolishness. Mm -hmm. Faith, not emotions. Mm -hmm. Faith, not emotions. Mm -hmm. I got to detach in order to attach. Y'all don't even understand. Everybody, you're scared of dying because you won't practice dying. When you practice dying, meaning what? Why do you think God said we must suffer? When we suffer, something has to die when you suffer. When you suffer, you don't get your way. So God say, I must let you suffer. And so on, in doing so, you will practice dying. So now when death comes, it will be no place that I am afraid of. You ever seen some? You work in the hospital, right? You've been around somebody who's dying, right? It's not a pretty sight. You must. See, y'all want to live and then you want to die. Oh, I'm going to live one day, I'm going to die. It's a, I'm telling you, if you have not been prepared for death, Death will kill you. If you have not, <laughs> thank you, Holy Ghost. If you have not been prepared for death, it will literally kill you. Why? What are you saying? If I have not accepted the preparation of believing in Jesus, hello, and now that takes me out of my place of emotions, right? Hello, because in order to believe in Jesus, I got to believe in somebody that they told me about and that I did not see. And then on top of that, now y'all really got me messed up. Now you want me to listen to somebody who they told me about. Now I got to listen to somebody who told me about. And now I got to listen to who he going to tell me about. My God. Uh, Jesus. Y'all told me about Jesus. Now Jesus going to tell me about God. Well, that's a whole lot. That's a whole <laughs> a whole lot of ass from a person that's been burned. You've never been burned. You've never been hurt. 
you choose to walk in her. You choose to walk in the fire. God gave you all the signs. Negro, the house is on fire. <laughs> it's on fire. But you said, I'm going to walk in it anyway. Just like the man who, who's standing on the, on, the, on, the, on the top of the Empire State Building. And he believed in God so much, God said, if you, if you, if you jump off this, you're going to die. But you think you are exceptional to your brain splattered all over the ground. What I'm trying to tell you today, you got to get into a place where you don't, you stop trying to prove that you love God and just love God. And there is no place, see, as long as I'm emotional, I can be, I can be, I can be led by people. I told them this morning, I said, the whole thing about, the whole thing about, about, about sin, I don't know what part of that y'all missing. I keep talking about it every week because on the, on the wake up with Jesus, I'm so tired of people telling you you're going to go to hell for sin. That's the biggest lie. That's the biggest lie that they're trying to sell you in the Bible. But you can't detach from sin. As long as you can't detach from sin, as long as you got your mind on sin, you can't have your mind on sin and God. I know, Pastor, you've been talking about this a lot, but I need you to understand the biggest lie religion is telling you, Jesus said they told you that you were going to die, and, and, and so you came and brought these, these temporary, these temporal offerings. He said, but I'm gonna give you a permanent offering for your sins. Jesus was a what? Permanent offering for my sins. Godly, why y'all can see I told you the problem is the religious folk, they wanna get, they wanna, they wanna control you. And what is it? I told y'all this morning, who was in the class this morning? What is the greatest controller? Uh, uh, what is the greatest controller uh, uh, of a sinful person? They feel what? Guilty. guilty. If I can make you feel guilty, I can make you want to, I can make you do anything I want you to do. Amen. So now the church keeps selling sin because if they sell sin, now they can tell you how much to put in church. If I can control your guilt, I can control you. God said, I want nobody controlling you by what they don't know. He said, what I want you to understand, how can I tell you you can't be with me when you act like me? God said, I know you're going to be interrupted and acting like me because I put you in a, a, a simple place to show them, show them that even though you are a part of it, it will not stop you from acting like me. He said, it is rare that you can sin and act like me. He said, so I don't want you to sin because sin will take you out of the place of acting like me. He said, but on occasion you will be able to sin and you might have a moment of treating somebody right. He said, but that place is what? Rare. We even said it this morning in the class. He said if he allowed, just like Mr. Nisa preached, I can't, I, I know y'all keep hearing me say this, because I keep still seeing people judging folk because of their sins. And not their acts of Christ. Not their acts of Christ. God told us in our, in our, in our study this week, when I wake up with Jesus study this week, he said withhold yourself from these things. He was talking about sexual, uh, sexual immorality. He was talking about greed, lying, lust. But then he said, then he said, well, anybody remember that scripture? What was that scripture, man of God? Then he came back, he said, but he said, but get rid of these things. And the first one was anger. My Lord, my Lord. He said, the first one, he said, withhold yourself from sin. He said, but get rid of these behaviors that make you treat your brothers and sisters. Not like I treated you. Y'all don't like that. Y'all don't like that because now you can't. Now you can't blame sin for your mistreating me. That's why y'all don't want to let sin go. Oh, I'm going through, Pastor. If you only know the battle that I'm in, nigga, that don't give you no reason to treat me like you're supposed to treat me. I'm sorry, yo, all, all of those who are offended on YouTube with that word, but every now and then I have to go there. Come on, Bishop, be real. That's right. You want to have an excuse. Sin gives you an excuse to, to treat me like a dog. Sin gives you an excuse to talk to me bad. Sin gives you an excuse. So you know what? Now when I take sin away, now you ain't got nobody. Can't blame it on God. Can't blame it on the devil. No more. Can't blame it on sin. Oh, my, my God. That leaves nobody in the room but me. <laughs> Amen. 
I done went through a season of blaming it on God. I done went through a season of blaming it on the devil. I done went through a season of blaming it on sin. Now, all of them showed me, okay, I'm going to step out the room and see what happened. God done stepped out the room, you kept sinning. Jesus done stepped out the room, you kept sinning. You blamed it on the devil, even the devil stepped out the room and you kept sinning. Then sin stepped out of the room and there was nobody left to blame it on but all because you don't have faith. All because you're led by what you see. In order for me to believe it, you got to show it to me. And I got a man coming in here tomorrow night that saw him about 14 days ago. And, I, and I'm, I'm bringing him for one reason. He's going to tell you that he's a sinner. He's going to tell you that not long before he went to heaven, and he went to heaven, he's going to tell you that he sinned not long before he went to heaven. But all who know Brother Barry, he's always nice and kind to everybody, even when we have offended him. He's the only white man that came to him. So the man on the kicked the man out of the church. <laughs> The man, the man can say red, and, and, and it's red on the on 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 the on, um, on the picture. She said that's dark red. <laughs> yes, I would. But she called him. Amen. When she came into the awareness of what she was doing, Amen. and she not she not only apologized, she was truly remorseful because her apology led him to come back to church. Y'all hear what I'm telling you? Thank you, Jesus. So what I'm saying, he's gonna be here tomorrow night, and he's gonna tell you. Not long before he left here, he sinned, but he still went to where? Heaven. Heaven. Because he treat brother, had brother Barry ever treated anybody him bad? Oh, yeah. That's the way he lives. That's the way I live. I live in a place of treating people how God has treated me. Oh, Bishop, you do some crazy things. Yes, I do. But who have I ever treated bad in here? Nobody. My wife, I, she, I apologize to you, baby. But she looked through it in the seal of forgiveness. But do y'all understand what I'm saying here? It's not what you do, it's where you where you live. Do I remember that question I told y'all? It was something I told y'all to remember to ask me. Something, they don't, can somebody ask me right now because I forgot it. What did I tell you to ask me? I never knew it. Yeah, never know. It's gonna be a shame. When I get to help. When I get to heaven, it's going to be a glorious day. It's going to be a wonderful time. It's going to be just like this. It's going to be just like this. It's going to be the golf courses. It's going to be the beautiful skies. You got to understand something, saints. They were once the same place. He said he separated the heavens and the what? Earth. They were once the same. It's going in heaven and don't even... Lord, my God, my God. <laughs> my God, my God. The only thing that determines where I am is how I treat who's there with me. Mm. Everybody in heaven treats everybody good because of where they're at. The only difference is I'm not in heaven because of what I see. Sinful people. Jesus, Lord. My God. Mm. going to look just like this. Right, and the only thing that makes it heaven is how you treat people. Yeah. In heaven, they don't lie to each other. Mm. In heaven, they don't hurt each other. In heaven, they don't abuse each other. Amen. The only difference he separated the what? Heavens and the what? They were the same place at one time. What made them different was who's in them. Jesus, man and spirit, resided in earth. God, spirit only, resides in heaven. So he said, the spirit from heaven is transferable to who oh, missed that? Earth. What makes earth, earth, and what makes heaven, heaven 
is our behavior of how we treat those who are with us. Not how they treat us. See, if you treat me bad, that don't keep me from going to heaven. If I treat you bad, it keeps me from going to heaven. So if I treat you bad, that means you could be in heaven and, and without me. If you treat me bad and I treat you good, that means I could be in heaven without you. But see, I got to have faith beyond what I see. Because all I'm going to see down here in this wicked place called earth is earthly things, earthly people, and sinful actions. Jesus, man. God. On earth as it is in heaven, faith takes me to the place of saying, you know what? Even though you're still here on earth, I now live in heaven. And what says I live in heaven is by the way I treat you. How can God kick me out of where I'm already in? Y'all worried about getting in. I ain't worried about getting in because I'm already in because of how I, tr I treat people like they treat people in heaven. I can't be kicked out of heaven if I'm already... Yeah. My, it's not my sin. Well, Bishop, I know what you do. But when have I put my burdens on you? I go through what I go through and help you with your burdens. Yes, you do. <laughs> it's your behavior that determines whether you're in heaven or on earth. And I ain't worried about going to heaven no more because why? Because I treat people, I act like people act in heaven. So I'm already there. My God. Now the problem is, with all these heathens around you, the problem is they don't want you to stay there. They want to catch. They want to call you to come outside and play, and they're gonna wait to God. They they gonna say, "I thank God coming to get him today. Let me come and call him outside." Because if you're outside playing, when you're supposed to be there, hello somebody, Amen. give God a hand, praise. Oh, give God a hand, God. praise. I, 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 God said, "Just shut it down right there. Jesus. Just shut it down right there." Why am I not in heaven? Because of me. Not because of God. Not because of Satan. Not yet softly. Not because of God. Not because of Satan. It's because I don't want to be. Amen. I'd, rather, I'd, rather, I'd rather want to be a want to be rather than want to be with God. Amen. I'm going to preach that one day. Would you, would you want to be with God or would you rather be a want to be? Oh, oh. Do you want to be with God? Or do you want to be? God is saying, if you go on the plate beyond your state of just wanting to be a wannabe and you want him to touch you and, and, and give you the key to heaven showing that you want to be with him forevermore he said the altar is not yours 